Welcome home. You're watching Legacy Television. I'm Jeremy Pearsons, and we are so blessed to have you with us today in the house. And that's what this place is, the household of faith. That's who we are. And we want you to know that as you watch this broadcast today, there is a place for you in the house of faith. We're going to get into something really special today. For the last several months, really, we've been inviting you to come with us into Family Night, which is something we do about once a month here at Pearson's Ministries International Legacy Studios. We invite some of our friends and partners from the area just to come into the house with us and worship the Lord and get into the Word. And uh, recently, the Lord put some things on Sarah's heart concerning the life of Daniel. What a life Daniel is. What a life he lived. There are so many things, lessons to be learned from his life, truths to be pulled. And the Lord really began to unfold some things to Sarah concerning the life of Daniel. And she just unloaded on us here in family night. And it was powerful. This place was packed. I'm telling you, it was the best one we've ever had. And the anointing on her and on the word was so rich and so strong. And that's why we want to bring this to you starting this week on Legacy Television. She's going to get into the life of Daniel specifically today concerning the excellent spirit that was found in him. This is what you want to be found in you. I know it's what I want to be found in me. So let's go right now to family night. Let's get into the word with Sarah as she talks about lessons from the life of Daniel. I want to talk to you about, to, about Daniel. And as I was praying this week, I, I had it in my heart to study about the excellent spirit. And so I began to study, and the Lord revealed a lot of things to me for our staff. And we had an awesome time this week in prayer. And, man, God has been so good to us. And just it, it just seems like he gives us revelation all the time in our staff. And I think, isn't our staff amazing, these people that you guys get to come around? They're just the best of the best. I am so blessed. I mean, every time I'm with them, I mean, every time I'm with them, I love them. Every time I'm, when I'm not with them, I'm thinking about them. And I'm just, like, so thankful but they're so awesome, and we got to spend a lot of time focusing on the excellent spirit. But as I prayed about tonight, I felt like the Lord was dealing with me about studying and getting more deep into that, what that means. And so I had these three areas that I want to cover tonight. Number one, the qualities of an excellent spirit. Number two, the fruit of an excellent spirit. And number three, how to develop an excellent spirit. Um, if we look at Daniel... Chapter 1, we're just going to start from the beginning. And can we have just a little bit of a Bible study in this? I just want to look at the scripture. And you guys know me. I have this thing, this bad habit of saying, oh, this is my favorite scripture. But I say that about every scripture in the Bible. So um, I just fell in love with the book of Daniel this week. I'm obsessed with the Bible. Is anybody else obsessed with the Bible? I mean, it's just like, you know, you read it. And the more you read it, you get really happy. And then you're like, wait, why am I not doing this every second of my day? Because then I'd be really happy. Okay. So um, the whole story here is King Nebuchadnezzar is a super prideful guy. And he is over, he's the king over all of Babylon. Babylon is the great contrasting city to the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is God's city. It's where he dwelt. And even though things weren't always perfect, people always didn't always do the, th the right thing. Prophets had to go through and tell the people to repent. You know, things happened. But overall, it was a city of holiness. It was a city that was consecrated unto God. Babylon would be the, the contrasting opposite, the extreme the other way. They had um, the Temple of Baal where they would offer, God, um, they would offer sacrifices to um, all these heathen gods. And not, nobody there um, knew our God. And during King Nebuchadnezzar's reign, he sent one of his main leaders to go and capture some men from Israel. He finally conquered them. And it's funny, he would always capture people and bring them back. And he, he was always curious about their gods. And nobody's God that he ever brought back was a, any, ever able to do anything or deliver them. But then he goes and he captures Daniel. And several other young men. You know, these guys might have been like young teenagers, they think. And they captured him. Can you imagine what was going on in their heart and their head? I mean, they had to leave their family probably. They had to leave their country, their home, where they had studied about God and knew God. And he was such a huge part of their life. To go into this heathen city where they're offering sacrifices. This horrible land that's just totally worldly. They were thrown into that. And when they got there... Um, 
King Nebuchadnezzar, he was just so prideful. And he just, everything was about him. Everything was about what he had created. And he was without God. And he brings Daniel here and all these guys. And the most amazing thing, he doesn't know that he's getting their God. He doesn't realize what's about to happen to him. And God is so smart and so amazing how he, how he orchestrated all this. I think it's beautiful to watch. As I read Daniel this week, I was so in awe of God. Just the honor of what an amazing God we serve. And um, if you look in verse 4, actually verse 3, the king ins- instructed Aspenaz, the master of the eunuchs, to bring some of the children of Israel and some of the king's descendants and some of the nobles, young men in whom there was no blemish, but good-looking, gifted in all wisdom, possessing knowledge, and quick to understand, who had ability to serve in the king's palace, in whom they might teach the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed for them a daily provision of the king's delicacies and of the wine which he drank and three years of training for them so that they, at the end of that time, they might serve before the king. For, um, now from among those were the sons of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. To them, the chief of the eunuchs gave names. He gave Daniel the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and the goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. I think this scripture right here stands out to me the uh, uh, probably the most important. Uh, If we look at the beginning of what it means to have an excellent spirit, it's verse 8. Daniel purposed in his heart. He purposed in his heart. What did he purpose in his heart? He purposed in his heart not to compromise anything in his life. Anything that was different from what he really knew to be true in his heart. He purposed in his heart not to defile himself. You know, this meat that he wouldn't eat. This meat, they think, was actually the the meat that they had offered on on the altar to the heathen gods, they would take that and they would uh, really repurpose it and sell it to people. They would eat it in their homes. And, you know, according to the law, their law, you were never to eat the meat that they used for sacrifice. And so Daniel, he, in no way was he going to compromise his God. And I think the amazing thing is he, he had every opportunity to do that right here. And the, the thing is, um, he, was, he wasn't in his home anymore. He wasn't in his land. He probably had nobody that would see that he would do wrong. And he had to do it. It was between him and God, that compromise. But he purposed in his heart. See, I think that he purposed in his heart to be set apart. And an excellent spirit is a heart set apart. And... Um, I really think that Daniel is a book. I've never thought of this until this week. Daniel is a book full of opportunities to compromise. And your life and my life will be a lifetime of opportunities to compromise. And if you think about that, there's so many ways that we can compromise how we eat, what we eat. I know it seems like a little one, but it's a day in, day out thing. You know, we know in our hearts that's good to eat or that's not. Um, How we dress, you know, holiness. Oh, man, holiness is an opportunity to stand out. But compromise just blends in. That's how it is with compromise. You know, another opportunity to compromise would be in how we treat people, the people that we love in our family, the people that we get to be with every day and serve God with, or the people that God has put in our lives. You can always have an opportunity to compromise in that. Who you date, um, working a job just for the money, or working a job because God's called you into that place. Every day we have opportunities to compromise. What's your high, the high calling on your life? Are you compromising it to do something else just for the money? I mean, <clears throat> say this with me. I have an excellent spirit. I purpose in my heart to be set apart for the glory of God. I will not compromise. 
You know, I also thought about, um, I don't know if you guys ever heard that old message by Oral Roberts. When I was studying this, I thought of it. He, he taught this message called The Fourth Man, and it's pretty awesome. If you've never heard it, go back and listen to it. But there's this part in there whenever, it's actually about Daniel. And I didn't realize that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, his buddies, they, this whole message is about that. And I, when they refused to bow down, they couldn't burn. And he said in this message, he said, um, whatever you compromise to keep, you will lose. I just think about that so many areas, you know. Are you compromising and your heart knows to be right about how much money you spend in an area or getting into debt, overwhelming debt that's going to affect your family or all these little things that we can compromise every day. We have a decision every day. But I, I, just, I just think it's amazing how this whole book is full of examples. Daniel had opportunities to compromise. He had an opportunity to stop praying, didn't he? Whenever they, they said, don't pray or we'll throw you in the lion's den, and he, didn't, he wouldn't compromise, would he? And just so many times, he just said no. He said it was more important to him to honor God. So an excellent spirit is a heart set apart. An excellent spirit refuses to compromise. As I prayed about this, I thought about an example in my life when this happened to me, and I, I, don't, I didn't realize it until this week that this was probably a turning point in my life that actually may be a reason that I get to do what I do today because of one thing I didn't compromise on. And I didn't even realize it until today, but and I'm probably going to cry when I tell this story. Hopefully my Mimi is watching because it has to do with my Mimi, my grandma. But when I was younger, um, in high school and college, I did, I did a lot of modeling, and that was my job. And I... Um, I, you know, I did it because I made a lot of money. <laughs> That's the only reason. Um, I really, I don't think I had a heart for it. You know, I, I thought it was fun and it was cool. And, you know, when you're young and dumb, um, no, I'm just saying, not saying anybody that does that is dumb, but I'm just saying for me, <clears throat> I just made a, I made good money and um, I was young and it was good for the time. It, it actually prepared me to be in front of people a little bit. So I don't think it was all wrong or bad, but there came a point when I, I had to either, I had to make a choice. And I remember when that choice happened, it was, I went to Dallas, and I had an interview with a new agency in Dallas. And while I was there, they wanted me to go do a photo shoot with a, a guy. And I went into the photo shoot, and toward the end of the photo shoot, I remember him talking to me about this. He said, if you want to go any further, because they were wanting me to like go to Europe and do some other print stuff and work. And they said, if you want to go any further, you're going to have to have more, um, the way he described it is pic pictures or more things that were very, something that I would never compromise on, you know. And I left there thinking, this is not what I'm called to do. I drove home, and I remember thinking I had a choice to make at that point. I'd done it for several years, done modeling for several years, and I knew for me to go any further in this, it would mean compromise from what I was called to do for the high calling that was on my life. And my heart had always been, my dream had always been to be in ministry full time, and I knew God was calling me deeper into that, deeper, to go deeper into the things he was calling me to. But I could have let money or pride, or success, or any of that caused me to compromise. And I remember driving home and just this deep thing within me thinking, I can't do this anymore. I can't compromise. I want God. I want his plan for my life. I want to go after him. I want to have all that he has for me. I can't do this anymore. This will be compromise for my life. And so it was really funny, too. I didn't even think about this, but that was the trip when the Lord was talking to me about my husband someday. And, you know, if I had gone that way, I don't know if I would have found and met Jeremy. I don't know if I would have had this door op open to me. But I remember that day driving home, I told my mom, Mom, I think this is it. This is I can't do it anymore because it will compromise what I know God is calling me to do. And so I drove home and I quit modeling. Never did it again. And I was, it was like towards my, the end of my year in college. And I also had a boyfriend at the time that I was dating and planning to marry. I had been dating him for about two and a half years. And around the same time, the Lord began to deal with me about breaking it off. And my flesh, it was definitely not something that was easy at all. I mean, I just, um, 
I've had, I, you know, you, when you're thinking one way about something for so long, you think this is it, this is right. So to change all that and be left out vulnerable in the open with God, just you and God again, it's something. And I remember the Lord dealing with me and it was so hard. And it's not, you know, following God is not always easy. Just because it's not easy doesn't make it right. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it is not always easy. And I remember this moment, and the Lord started to deal with me, and I just knew. I knew deep, deep down, this is not quite, this isn't God's best. Anything that isn't God's best for your life, that, let's say it like this, anything you know that isn't God's best for your life is compromise. And I thought, I can't do this anymore. And I, <clears throat> I broke it off with him. And um, it was really hard. It was so messed with my soul. It was, you know, I was back to square one, start, almost like starting my whole life plan over. God, God, what do you have for me? But I didn't compromise with that relationship or with my job, future job. And so I remember not long after that, I went to my grandma's house. And I came in and she said, Sarah, she began to cry. She said, I just had a vision of you from the Lord. And my grandma is like this amazing woman that has prayed for me her whole life, prayed Jeremy into my life. <laughs> I mean, she's prayed for me. She would call me in the middle of the night sometimes and be like, Sarah, um, I'm praying for you right now. What's going on? And she was right, like she should be praying for me or, you know, like just call me the next day. And it was just always God looking out for me she, through her. And, <clears throat> and this one day she said, Sarah, I just had a vision of you. The God gave me a vision, and she started to cry, and I knew that it was God because the way she was acting was so like, what's happening? It wasn't like her. But she said, I was sitting there, and I saw you running through a field of flowers. And this big open field, you were running, like singing and dancing, and you were singing at the top of your lungs, and you were so happy. And you were just dancing all along the field, and you were having so much fun. And you got to the end of the field, and there was this giant gate. And at the end of both ends of this gate were two giant angels standing at the end of the gate. And as you were, ran up to the gate, they flung the gate open, and you danced right through the open door, the open gate. And God spoke to me, and he said... She will go forth with joy in singing. She was created for my glory. And then he said, she's passed three tests. First, he said, she's passed three tests for the ministry. First is the lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Can you see how all those decisions played into that? And I was, as I was praying this week, I look back on it and I'm like, I wonder if that was the turning point in my life. The moment of no compromise where God was able to fling open those doors into my high calling, into the ministry, into, into doing what I was created for, to give him glory. You know, all those other things like the modeling and all the things that, and you know, I'm not against this for other people. All that's between you and him if you do that. And that's between you and him and I'm not downing it. But for me and for my calling, it was a compromise. And you know, all of that, I'm, all of that is for self. Look at me. Let me show you me. But God said to my grandma, he said, she was created for my glory. And that always stuck with me like, oh, wow, to be created for the glory of God. It's an awesome thing. But I just, when I prayed about this thought, an an excellent spirit is a spirit that refuses to compromise. I'll look at another part of an excellent spirit, and this is in Daniel chapter 2. King Nebuchadnezzar's had a dream, and he's just irate because it's bothering him. It's causing so much anxiety in his soul, and he needs somebody to explain the dream to him. Finally, they find, David, um, they find Daniel, and Daniel... Tells him, give me some time. They're gonna, he's going to kill all these guys if they don't tell him what it means. I mean, this, is, this guy's for real. Um, and he says, Daniel says, give me some time and I'm going to give you the interpretation. And then in verse 19, chapter 2, verse 19, it says, you know, oh, actually, let's read 18. I think this is so cool. 
uh, 17. <laughs> then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they might seek the mercies from the God of heaven concerning the secret so that Daniel and the rest of his companions might not perish and the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night vision. So Daniel blessed the God of heaven and he sought the Lord for the answer. And then in verse, um, uh, God gave him all the wisdom he needed. In verse 22, it says, Dan, you know, Daniel began to praise the Lord and give him glory for this. And he says in verse 22, this is the secret to another, an excellent spirit. He reveals deep and secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells in him. I thank you and praise you, O God, my father. You've given me wisdom and might and have now made known to me what we ask of you. In verse 28, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and he has made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days. What I think is awesome about this is that Daniel, one reason he has an excellent spirit is because he values the deep and the secret things of God. An excellent spirit values the deep and secret things of God and is also hungry for personal revelation. Isn't this what Daniel did? He wanted it. He wanted to know the secrets of God. He wanted God. He wanted God for himself. He wanted to see him. He wanted to know what things mean. He wanted to get into the word. He wanted to see it for himself. He wanted the word from heaven. So an excellent spirit wants these things from God. Matthew 5, 6 tells us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Isn't it cool to see all the things that Daniel got to see into? Not only if you keep reading on in the whole book, but he sees like major prophecies of the end times that we haven't even seen yet. I mean, he's, he, God gives him visions and, and major depths of revelation. It's awesome. But you know why he got it? He valued it. That's how you get the good things of God, the secret things, the deep things, is when you want it. When you long for it, when you want him, you want his things. You're not complacent, but you go after him. You go after his secrets. You go after the deep things. And I love how God gave him firsthand information on the hidden things because an excellent spirit was within him. Grace says you are loved in response. I say thank you, thank you, Lord. This is sweet salvation. This is sweet salvation. Grace says you are healed in response. I say thank you. I receive this is sweet salvation. Oh, yes. This is sweet salvation. I believe because you said it, but I trust because I know you. It is finished, it is done. You have risen, I have won. It is
Before we leave the broadcast today, I want to read this to you from the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10 says, With the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You know, something very powerful happens when you get your heart and your mouth in the same place, when what's going on in your heart the faith in God, the belief in His Word starts coming out of your mouth. It's enough to save you. It's enough to change your eternal destination. It's powerful. This is what the Word says, that when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you are saved. Now, I believe many people watching this broadcast right now, you love Jesus. You're, you're in a church. You're in the family of God, and that's wonderful. But I don't want to take for granted that there might be somebody who somehow this broadcast found its way to you, maybe you don't even know how. Well, let me tell you how. We prayed it would. And if you don't know Jesus, then you're the one we're after right now. And you need to make him the Lord of your life. You need to stop what you're doing and begin right now giving your life to him and just let him take over. And it's simple. All you have to do is what the scripture said, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Believe that he lived for you, died for you, and rose again for you. And with your mouth, confess and make him the Lord of your life. Just pray the simple prayer after me. Say, Father in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I believe in my heart that Jesus lived for me, died for me, and rose again for me. I confess with my mouth, Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sin. Wipe away my past, make me new, and make me clean. In Jesus' name, I receive your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I know, look, it's a simple prayer, but the Bible said, we read it, you're saved. This is the first day of the rest of your life. You begin right now in your walk with the Lord, and I'm telling you, it's the greatest decision you've ever made. And Jesus said it, when one comes home, all of heaven rejoices, and we get pretty excited about it here too. You see a phone number right now on your screen. If you're born again today, I want you to call that phone number, 817-577-0180. We want to hear about it. We want to rejoice with you. If there's something we can pray with you about, if you've got a request that you want somebody to pray in faith and pray the word with you, we want to do that. Just call that number. You'll be able to leave a message, and somebody from our office is going to call you back pray with you, and we want to see God do amazing things in your life. He is a good God. He's faithful to you. He's faithful to His Word. Thanks so much for watching the broadcast today. We love you. We can't wait to see you again next time on Legacy TV. Bye-bye.